Tracy Wilkinson, please come to the podium. Over the course of her career, Tracy Wilkinson has covered wars, crises, and daily life on three continents. As the Los Angeles Times Mexico Bureau Chief, she has used her exceptional reporting skills to explain the complexities and nuances of life in Mexico, one of the most dangerous countries for the press to readers in the United States. Her career be began with the United Press International, where she covered the Contra War in Nicaragua. She moved to the Times in 1987, first as a writer on the Metro staff, then as a foreign correspondent based in San Salvador. Creative and versatile, Wilkinson is capable of producing perceptive coverage of Pope Francis's visit to Brazil while describing life in the border city of Reynosa, controlled by drug traffickers. Tracy Wilkinson, for your years of commitment to promoting an understanding of Latin America in the United States, the trustees of Columbia University are honored to present you with the Mariah Morris Cabot Gold Medal. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to everyone in this room. Thank you especially to the Cabot Board, to Columbia University, to my family, friends, and colleagues, both at the Los Angeles Times and elsewhere, all of whom have helped me become a better journalist over the years. I returned to Mexico in the region about six years ago after having been away for a while. And I really want to talk about what I have seen the plight of journalism in Mexico as it has evolved in that time. A week ago, I was standing in the Mexican city of Iguala. Clandestine mass graves had been discovered on the outskirts of the town. More than 40 college students had gone missing after a confrontation with police, local police, a clash that had already left several students and others dead. You have to wonder what kind of mind thinks you can kidnap, take away 40 students, make them disappear, and get away with it. Then the mayor and a police commander went on the lam, suspects, in the disappearances and likely massacre. The tragic story involves so many of the currents running in today's Mexico. Egregious human rights atrocities, the phenomenon of the disappeared, revolution and student movements, the collusion of criminals and authorities. It is not, however, the story that the government of Mexico wants you to hear. The government has fairly successfully influenced the conversation about Mexico to focus on energy and education reforms, economic progress, and possible pros prosperity. And while those are fundamentally critical and important topics, they should not be allowed to overshadow the also fundamentally critical issues of security. Security is literally a life or death issue for many journalists in Mexico and throughout Latin America. We are, of course, familiar with the dangers posed by drug gangs and organized networks of, of criminals. Perhaps even more insidious, however, are the threats posed by local governments. In many parts of Mexico, although there was hope after the return of democracy that some of this would change, in many parts of Mexico, state governors are essentially new caciques, power lords, running their states like personal fiefdoms. Newspapers, radio and television stations and other media are enormously dependent on those governments for advertising, for their commercial well-being. Governors can dictate the kind of courage they get, and they do. They know where the local journalists live and where their kids go to school. And sadly, in many cases, the owners and publishers of those newspapers are complicit and do not support their own staff. There are many exceptions, of course. Many courageous journalists throughout Latin America using new technology, using uh, uh, web, news websites, um, using data, who defy the odds. And yet, while a massacre the scale of Iguala cannot be ignored. There are many smaller atrocities and disasters that do not get aired, 
States like Tamaulipas on the border with Texas, where drug gangs pretty much call the shots, are dark holes in terms of journalistic coverage. A few months ago, a group of international journalists met with the chief spokesman for the Mexican president. We had a long list of complaints and demands dealing with um, access and information flow. Finally, a journalist asked why the government had adopted this a new practice of calling press conferences only to simply read a statement and then not take questions. With surprising candor, the spokesman, the president's spokesman said, well, if we let you ask questions, you might start talking about things we don't want to talk about. And that is our challenge, to continue talking about the things, the realities, the truths that the leaders don't want to talk about. Thank you very much.